we're here in front of Don Wells' home on top of a hill. And, um, you know, now that we get it, we always get new information when we come out and make a personal appearance. And what we what was described in media and on social media is always much different than um, what we experience here when we're here in person. And this is, again, no different. As we are here, their house is on top of a mountain. And as we know, mom was not, she admitted um, to law enforcement that she was not watching the children at the time um, Summer Wells disappeared. We stayed on public property and uh, we have reviewed the area and we saw, you know, kids' equipment kind of tumbled down the mountain. And bikes, uh, one girls. bikes, um, girls, uh, little scooters and, you know, not you know, manual scooters. One's just with wheels on it, not, not with engines or anything like that or battery operated. And uh, they were turned over on the, when I've got, cut, I got footage of that. There's no way that somebody is going to come off this road, climb up a mountain through all the leaves and sticks and everything like that that makes a whole bunch of noise when you're trying to sneak on somebody's property. Go up there, past dogs, past three boys, past mom, past grandma, and search and know exactly where uh, a five-year-old girl is in this property. There's just, the, the idea that this story makes any sense is ludicrous. And then snatch the child, go back through the boys, go back through the dogs, go back down the hills through all the crunchy branches and leaves, oh, and sorry. pack the child up in a vehicle and take off. There is literally no possibility. None. The idea that this child was abducted now that I have seen this property is, is a farce. What I can tell you is maybe Candace didn't injure the child. But something happened. The child was unattended, may have came out of the house may have been playing on their trike or their bike or the little push thing and pushed herself right off the mountain. Fell, hurt herself. You know, we did hear that there was a scream earlier in the day. Maybe when mom realized that she hadn't seen the kids in a while, decided to go and check on them, realized that Candace was deceased and freaked out and did something with her body because she wasn't watching her child. She wasn't making sure her child was safe. And then we can go to the opposite end of the spectrum where she injured her child and the child met their demise that way. At the end of the day, you know, when I came out here, I had this opinion that Candace was key. Being out here in person only solidifies the fact that I truly believe Candace is key in this whole entire thing. This is up a mountain, a very steep mountain, through a creek, through all these crunchy, listen. At the time it was summer though, but Look at all the branches. You're, are you going to say that you're going to get across all this without making a noise, a sound? Then you have dogs to boot. You got three kids. You don't know where Summer is actually located in the home. You know, it's not surprising. It's not surprising. That home is on the mountain there on the top of a hill. The Wells have a history of domestic violence. Uh, the Wells' uh, son. Uh, child molestation charges. He has a bunch of criminal charges from uh, Utah. The mother, you know, had their children taken away from a prior relationship up in Wisconsin. Uh, it's bad. These people are bad, bad news. Abandonment. My theory is they came home that day. You see how, you know, steep that mountain is. Look at look look on the mountain there. You can see a bunch of children's toys and stuff like that. That maybe, fallen. Maybe she fell down. Maybe she was left unattended. And she just stumbled there and tripped and then boom, 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 boom. They panicked, put her somewhere. That's that's my theory. 
My theory is a little different after speaking to the neighbors. So what had happened, uh, she said that these people are violent. They're crazy. Because I asked her that specific, I, I laid that specific um, scenario down for her. And she does not believe it. The neighbor, the neighbor called bullshit on that theory that she fell and they, she said that they would have found her body by now. And I said, well, maybe uh, Candace got scared and, and did something with it. And she goes, absolutely not. So she believes that these people, because she hears everything that goes on from this house. She said, sound carries. And she believes that Summer Wells was harmed by somebody that was home at the time. And that's why they haven't found Summer Wells' body and why things are going on the way they are. So uh, there are two, uh, at the end of the day, we always say, we, you know, when we run a case that we always seem to come back to a certain area, we're coming back straight to this house. We're not going anywhere else as to where she could possibly have been injured. And it was so we just heard screaming coming from Don Wells' house. Right up there. It was, it was, it was like arguing. If we can hear that from down here. Yep, so do we. Screaming? We heard arguing. Oh, I thought he told you that. <laughs> Yeah, we did too. I heard it was like, what? And if they were talking, then imagine if they were screaming. Exactly. It sounded like they were raising their voices. You know, we, you know, Don Wells could be very receptive to us if he sees this. He might be, come out and talk to us. So we can't assume that, you know, I mean, again, I can hear faint things. I can hear maybe some music or something or something. and. Benny's voice. I know that laugh anywhere. So Don Wells has a convicted felon in his house while he's trying to get his children back. That's a darn shame. I think CPS needs to know who he's hanging out with.